Welcome to the latest edition of Fundamentals. This time around, I'm going to look at one actively managed member of our list of 72 favourite funds, namely First State Global Listed Infrastructure. The fund invests in a diversified portfolio of listed infrastructure and infrastructure related securities from around the world. It doesn't invest directly in the projects themselves. This is a specialist area of the global equity market that can, when it goes well, meet a range of investor needs. As an equity strategy, the fund should offer capital growth over the long term. However, the team running the fund also has considerable focus on preserving capital, and we would expect the fund to deliver a less volatile return profile over time when compared to the broader equity market. The fund, which has £2.6 billion under management, is also structured to provide an attractive level of income for investors and, importantly, since many infrastructure assets are able to raise prices in line with inflation, the fund could be able to grow its distributions over time and provide some protection against the ravages of inflation. The portfolio's benchmark is the S&P Global Infrastructure Index, and fund manager Peter Meany and his team currently hold 41 stocks. The top picks represent just under 50% of the assets, so Meany and colleagues are not afraid to take a view. The biggest positions in the fund as I sit here are the UK's National Grid, American oil pipeline player Kinder Morgan, Aussie toll road manager Transurban, American power supplier Dominion Energy, and East Japan Railway Company. By market cap, around a quarter of the assets are in mega caps, just under two thirds in large caps, and the rest in mid caps, as we can see here. By sector, the focus of the fund naturally takes it in some directions and not in others at all. Utilities and industrials dominate alongside energy and telecoms. Tech, mining, financials, real estate, consumer facing stocks, well, they don't feature at all. By country, America is the number one exposure, which makes sense as it's the world's biggest economy and the world's biggest stock market, followed by the Eurozone, Asia, including Japan, and also the UK. So there's a good geographic spread and offer here. The fund is eligible for SIP, sizes and dinning accounts, and the minimum investment is just one share. The fund currently comes with a yield of around 2.6%. And here we're talking about the accumulation units where the dividends are automatically reinvested for you. The ongoing charge figure is 0.82%, so you do have to pay for the expertise of the fund managers. And for those who set store by such things, the fund comes with a five star ranking from Morningstar. So those are the mechanics. The question to address next is why can investors consider this fund for portfolio inclusion today? And I think there may be three possible reasons. The first is that infrastructure can be an investment theme which appeals to long-term investors as it taps into so many different themes, population growth, productivity, urbanisation, and it does so via many industries and across many geographies. As such, it provides diversification by stock, sector and continent. The second reason is that infrastructure stocks do tend to be less volatile than the broader stock market over time, so the fund may again suit patient, relatively risk-averse investors as the three-year beta of 0.93 suggests. Third, the fund has done well since launch in 2007, providing a healthy combination of capital gains and income as we can see here, although we must all of course bear in mind that the past is no guarantee for the future. None of this however is to say that First State Global Listed Infrastructure Fund will suit every investor, also for three reasons. First, the nature of the fund means it probably will underperform global stock markets at certain times of the cycle especially if animal spirits are running free and momentum in growth stocks are in fashion, which frankly could rather describe where we are now. Patience and a long-term time horizon are both required. Second, infrastructure funds can struggle, at least initially, when interest rates start to go up. This is because certain infrastructure stocks, particularly utilities, are often treated as what is called as bond proxies. When interest rates go up, bonds tend to go down in price, as investors take money out of fixed income and stick it back into cash in search of the improved interest rate on, and lesser risk represented by, cash. The same can happen to utilities, as the gap closes between their dividend yield and the interest rate on cash, money can begin to fl flow out of the stocks and back into bank accounts, again owing to that relative risk reward calculation. The US Federal Reserve and Bank of England have both begun to raise interest rates, albeit very slowly and from a very low level, so this trend must be watched. Third, infrastructure stocks can be ensnared in local politics. Politicians or regulators may decide they're charging too much and crack down accordingly, or even threaten to nationalise the assets. We can see both policy options under discussion even in the UK right now, let alone emerging markets. 
So investors need to check the geographic exposure of any infrastructure fund and weigh up this risk, no matter how remote it may seem. Investors must therefore do their research on First State Global Listed Infrastructure Fund to make sure that it fits with their overall strategy, target returns, time horizon and appetite for risk before they put any capital to work. Thank you for watching and I look forward to seeing you next time.